Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I want to talk today about something that I actually have never heard anyone preach on, um, but I bet someone has somewhere. And uh, I really want to speak from the heart, and I hope that dots connect, because it'd be really easy for me to, to not connect them, <laughs> so uh, just lose the track. So why don't, why don't you guys pray for me, and I'm going to just ask the Holy Spirit to leave this time. Deal? Yeah, awesome. So I'm going to give you like 10 seconds to pray for me first, <laughs> and then I'll pray. <sighs> yeah, thank you. Holy Spirit, we love you. We love your leadership. God, we love who you are, the way that, uh, the ways that you are the ways that you made us, and uh, just ask that you would come and move in this time, meet with each of us, free us, release us, bring us into the design that you have for each of us. We love you, in Jesus' name. All right, um, I think it was last week, and I think we've heard it before, Justin mentioned that about 20% of the American church, at least, stopped going to church last year, and... Um, I, don't, I mean, it sounds kind of cynical to say it's not surprising, but in some ways it's not. Um, and I think it has to do, if I was to take a guess, with a, with a lack of, of authenticity and expression within the church. Uh, and I don't mean that in like a coming down way. I mean, I think that we've somehow, over the years, lost some of God's intention for each person. I think some of that comes down to um, the Industrial Revolution, (laughs) Um, which has some really good points, but the enemy has used it to put people in rows and to get them to function the same way over and over again, day in and day out, week after week. This is your job. This is what you do. This is what you will always do. And if you want to live your life, find a good line to get in, maybe upgrade to a better line, and keep working your way within these lines, uh, and you'll have a good life. And in the church, I think inadvertently, not intentionally, we've adopted some of that. And so we see a good example of someone, and we try to fit that line and walk that person's path. Or maybe we like the way that this one expresses, and so we try to walk their path. But the reality is that... Each of us have a really unique path, and that unique path, if not connected with and lived out, means that a certain aspect of God that he intended to reveal the world to the world through you may never be expressed. And so we have become content to just do these things and stay in these lines, and I feel like the Lord is inviting us to become what I'm going to call artisans. Or creatives. And if that word immediately makes you think, oh, well, then I'm excluded and that's not me, I just want to say that absolutely everyone is an artisan. Everyone was created to be this way. Picasso said, um, let's see, what is it? All children are artists. The problem is how to remain an artist once we grow up. We're all made that way. Um, So. So that's, this is where I want to go today. I want to just kind of unpack this on a few levels. Um, Hopefully, first, if you you don't feel like you could be an artisan, that you could have a creative life, hopefully we can break that down. Hopefully you can connect with that. Um, And I think I'm going to start with where we began. And Genesis says that we were all that we were created in God's image. We were made as his representatives. We know that. Um, But we know that the first thing he actually did that's recorded is create. He, day after day, made things that had never been, things that had never seen, never been expressed in the natural world, and he brought them into the world, and each time he would say, this is good, and this is good, and this is good. And... 
there's something special about good. And it's interesting that he didn't say that, that these things were great. Because when we think of great art or great musicians, we use the word great. And we think it's this some kind of phenomenal above thing, like the ultimate or the penultimate expression is the expression of greatness. But God actually didn't use that word when he described what he created. He used the word good. Do you wonder why? I think it's because it was the nature of creation. It expresses his goodness. It was him being expressed in the world, in what we saw. He took the things that were invisible, made them visible, and everything that we partook and everything that we connected in that is good, and it reveals him. So if we're his, his representatives, then when we create or when we express, we are bringing forth his goodness in us. Amen. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Let's take another look at um, just how God is, because the way that he represented himself in the world is also how we get to represent him in the world. Jesus never did the same thing the same way twice, right? Every person he encountered, every situation he found himself in, he revealed God in a different way. He lived in the moment, and the Spirit of God moved him in and through him in a very expressive way. This is also something we can tap into. The, um, okay, starting to get a little nervous. <laughs> you can pray again. <laughs> Keep the prayers coming. There we go. All right. Um, Yeah. Thanks. Um. You guys okay with a couple of minutes, a couple of moments of silence? Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> All right. Um. Our expression of what is inside of us reveals God to the world. It's important that we each are willing to embrace that thing. It's, it's a, honestly, a willingness to embrace the dreams that are inside of you that might feel scary. You may have passions that you've carried and never expressed. You may have dreams that feel too big and outlandish to verbalize. Those things are gifts from the Lord to you in ways that he wants to bring you to life, to cause you to thrive, and to reveal him to the world. Um, to be, I'm going to say, an, an artist or to, be, to live an authentic life requires enormous vulnerability because that self-expression, that testing the thing that you don't know will be received or that will feel broken when you express it is incredibly vulnerable. 
It is difficult. It is very scary. And the temptation is to go into what we've known and get into a line again and just do what people expect or what they think something should look like. But, but each person in this room has things inside of them, and it may have been decades that these things have been sitting and not touched, or maybe you've tried it before and you failed, and it hurt too much to pick it back up. Or maybe you've just never tried it. But what happens if you do fail? Well, well then we're all in the same boat because we all fail when we try these things. There's always a struggle and a battle in authenticity. It is, I think, one of the things that the enemy hates the most because I don't know that he can be authentic. (laughs) All he can do is copy, and he wants us to copy. And so the Lord is inviting us into really what it is is a courageous life. It's, It's a life that says... I don't know what's on the other side of this dream. I don't know what's on the other side of this idea. And maybe this thing that's in me seems impossible. Maybe I have maybe it's 10 steps to get where I want to be and I don't even really know how to do the first step. And we can live in that place and we can live a whole life. <laughs> Troy said something to me a few weeks ago. He said the worst thing in the world is to live the same year over and over for the rest of your life. And that's really, I think, where we've all found ourselves at different times. We're living the same day over and over, the same year over and over, and it just melds into the same decades over and over. But there's so much that God put into each one of us that he wants to bring forth, and it's for many reasons. It, part of it will make you be the most true version of yourself possible. Part of it will open up eyes who maybe won't even look at God, who maybe would never encounter him, never experience him, unless it came the way that he came through you. Um, You know, in this, it's it's not just about painting or music or writing those are, you know, the tangible expressions that we associate with the arts. It's about finding the passion of the things that are in you and pursuing them. That courageous path will change the world around you. It will change your world. And as a people, it'll definitely change a whole group, a whole region. One of the, one of the hardest things I, struggle, I think we struggle with is feeling like we don't have options at times or like we're stuck or to lose hope, to lose the idea that there's more and to live day after day in a rut or discouraged. Um... This is, this is why, I don't know, I'm calling it the call to artisanship or call to authenticity. It's completely uncontrollable. You know, as far as the kingdom goes, community goes, once we embrace that and we try to go after it, you can't really control anyone. It's um, because you don't, you don't know exactly what God put in them. You don't know, you don't have the, the interpretation or the expression that they do. And to make them yours limits the expression of God. Um, this is, it's, it's a beautiful and exciting and inspiring idea. But it is so hard. Would you guys agree? I mean, just thinking about dreams that maybe you've never verbalized, maybe you've never even told someone, maybe you've never even, maybe you've never even said it to your spouse or your family. I'm saying those dreams, 
very well could be the future that God has planned for you. Um, so going back to the 20% of the church that, that left, I, I think it almost, the observation comes more clearly and when you talk about millennials or Generation Z, I'm not exactly sure which generations are which, but they get dogged a lot for, um, well, it said that they, they don't want to work hard, they don't want to take jobs that are open, um, you know, like they're lazy. And I actually, actually don't know that that's the full picture. I, I think a lot of them are looking for something of value to put their time and energy into. And they, and they actually kind of are the picture of this. I don't want to just do the thing because it's what we've done. I don't just want to do the thing because I'm told to. I want something to believe in. I want something that's real. I want something that's authentic. And I just wouldn't be surprised if a lot of that 20% that left left because they wanted something authentic and real to connect to and to believe in and to be a part of. Um, you know, the, the average church is not supposed to be, I think, a bunch of people hearing one or two or three or four people speak. It's supposed to be this beautiful, large expression of all the people, um, a body of believers changing the world around each of them. And that's a much more beautiful and, I think, relevant picture of the kingdom. It's definitely what I think we're supposed to be. Um, Yeah, you know, we grow up and we learn how to color inside the lines. And we learn how to keep things together. Um, And then we praise those who create things that came from painting outside the lines in great irony and the people who had great breakthroughs because they merged things that you should, who would merge those why would you do that you know I've, most of the great breakthroughs in technology have come that way all these things are expressions ultimately pointing back to who God is and how he made us um, you know the realm of creativity is tied to the realm of imagination and i think we're kind of i think we're moving into an era really of seeing a lot of miracles, signs, and wonders again. Um, I think it's becoming a lot more routine. Um, Routine is not the word I wanted to use there. Um, Common, yeah, more common. You know, God's God's moving, and we're seeing those things, and, and society is in such turmoil and fighting over human arguments and human points of view and if all we do is think along human terms and human thought, we really don't have a whole lot to bring to that situation. But if we operate from a heavenly creative realm, if we operate from the way that he created us and designed us, if we tap into his mind, if we tap into his innovation, we have solutions for every situation. We don't bring solutions by thinking better than the next Person. It's not what we were designed or intended to do. We were designed to bring heavenly thinking, a heavenly reality into this world. And part of that is this imaginative, expressive, creative aspect that we saw so much in Jesus where he just, he just wasn't the same to each person. He would meet with someone and he knew their past and where they're at and he came to them in a way that spoke on multiple levels. I think one of the most beautiful things of, um, what's the TV show? The Chosen is that presentation of, you know, it's an interpretation, but I think it's probably beautifully opening up the reality that Jesus is incredibly personal to each person. He is incredibly uniquely connected and he brings creative solutions to them to open up their lives, to heal them, to release them and free them. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Only Jesus could have dealt with a woman caught in adultery in a way that killed her shame at the same time as protecting her. You know, it's, it's fun to imagine a woman that broken being restored in a moment and walking back shame free which seems impossible, but only he could do that, and he knew the way to do it. You know, we have, 
this is the same mind that we have access to. You know, uh, Paul said that we have the mind of Christ. We have his thoughts that we can tap into. We have his creative realm to operate from. And so part of this is a, is a call to really to let go of the wisdom of this age and this world of human thinking and just to start to ask him, what do you want to do? What do you see? What are you saying? You know, most of the Bible, when there are encounters between humans and angels or humans and God, it was in the form of dreams. And I don't know how many dreams you guys have had, but most of mine are not super straightforward. <laughs> They're crazy and like, I need an interpretation, you know. Um, that's just something about him is the way he likes to speak. He likes to give us these things that are interesting and unique and draw us into them and explore them and we get to open them up and, and he's revealed in them. And this is, this is for us. We get to in, encounter him in this way and we actually get to live in the world in this way, bringing wisdom that is from another realm, bringing expression and artistry that is from another realm. Um, but coming back to that, like we said earlier, artistry is really hard. Being authentic is really hard. It is not something that comes overnight. Many of those artists that we would say are great spent a lifetime working and failing. You know, uh, when Monet was a painter... Everyone was trying to paint in a very specific style. And he said while they were trying to mimic each other, he looked out the window. And he observed nature and fell in love. And he began to paint what he saw and he began to paint what he dreamed. And so he created an entirely new form of art. It was the beginning of Impressionistic art. This was... Difficult. He was criticized greatly for his divergence from what was normal. But what do we have today? A whole new vein of art that opened up to the world that touches many who would have never been drawn to the former Rembrandts and other popular painters of the time. When you express the unique thing that God gave to you, you open up a new avenue, a new window, a new door for the world to see God and to encounter his beauty. <sighs> but it takes a lot of hard work. And it takes a lot of courage. <sighs> Thanks, Jamie. Um... How many of you, if you have the courage to raise your hand, would say, I have dreams I have been terrified to pursue? I have. What if you knew God would meet you there? What if you knew in your failures and struggles along that path he would give you more of himself? What if that journey was not just a journey of expression but also a journey of healing? Because he would meet you where you break. And the brokenness from your past that has kept you from moving forward, he would meet you and heal. We have such an incredible opportunity, but it's going to take so much courage. And I want to talk for a second about, I guess, one um, taking steps towards it. 
and two, being a people who support each other in it. The first step, you know, I think in many cases is admitting that you want that thing or that, that, that desire, that longing, that dream that's in you is something that was from God. Sometimes it's writing down just, just the first step of saying, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but, but I want to, and I'm willing to take one step forward. And the much, much scarier thing is to tell somebody. Because you already know the lies that the enemy throws in your head when you even think about that. Who are you to dream about that? What experience do you have there? Why would God give that to you? Those are all definitely not God speaking. <laughs> Those are all definitely the enemy throwing lies your way, trying to keep you from taking a step into a path that God went before you in and is waiting for you in. Just like Monty spoke about two weeks ago, God goes before you and prepares and he comes behind you. The really important part, I think, in a community is being a safe enough people that when someone shares the dream or the longing or the thing in their heart that you actually support it. That you don't quelch it. You don't belittle it. You don't give them the eyebrows. (laughs) Um, It's a place that if anyone trusts you enough to share their heart with you in that, First, you should consider it to be an enormous mark of honor to be trusted like that. For someone to believe you are someone who would support them in a dream they're terrified to step into. So hold it with the utmost respect and love and honor. And two, encourage them in it. And in some, some cases, it's important to consider yourself to be like a splint more than a, a healer or a direction giver. Just be a support in their life that lets them try it out and helps them hold things together. There will be times if you pursue this path that you will encounter other people who have very similar passions and dreams. And in those moments, the enemy will come to you and tell you that because they have it, or it is similar, that God gave it to them and not to you. Or that you can't both function in it. Or that you need to diminish yours. But the reality is that both together will be greater than either one could be alone. You have to continue the courage again and choose it in that situation. Bless each other. Know that there is more than enough for both of you in the kingdom. And that the unique expression that will come through each of you is far more significant than trying to form either one of you into the other. Ah, yeah. Being creative is messy. Trying new things is messy. Dreaming itself can feel a little messy. (laughs) But it was out of the chaos that God brought creation. And he revealed his goodness. And he will out of the chaos and the unknown and the swirl in your dreams and in your hoping that he will bring the expression of his his goodness in your life. And as a people and a community, I've heard it described like this, if you are in a community that embraces 
that unique expression of God that embraces the creativity and the uniqueness of each person, that the environment is very much like a nursery with kids running around and screaming and going crazy. And if you don't have it, and if you're not willing to embrace it, then everything stays in lines and rows just like a graveyard. And one is full of life. It may be messy, but things are coming alive. Hearts are free. People can be themselves. And I think you know what the other is. There's nothing here. It's alive or it's controlled. But you can't control over here. You have to have open hands. When we walk with each other, we have to have open hands. Leaders have to have open hands. As someone pursuing your dreams and the things that God put in you, you have to have open hands to how he will walk you down that path. Hmm. But I believe this is for us. It's a, it's a scary path. It will take a lifetime to reclaim that childhood creativity, just like uh, Picasso said. But it's so worth it. Each of you will be the most pure and honest expressions of who God created you to be in this path. Each of us will express him in a unique, unique way that we would never have seen otherwise in this path. The world will be drawn to him in ways they did not imagine in this path. We will open up windows for people who have been in rooms blocked out from the sun, who couldn't see the daylight when we walk this path. This is a beautiful opportunity and um, I, I think I'd just like for us to, at this point, um, just pray together. I wanna, actually want to take a few minutes, and if you have your phone or a piece of paper or iPad or whatever, I actually want to give you a few minutes to, um, to write one thing down that's in your heart. Maybe you've never told anyone. Maybe you've been thinking about it. Maybe... You dreamed about it, haven't pursued it. Maybe it's something you dropped a long time ago and swore you'd never pick back up. But I'm just going to give you a few minutes. And um, I want you to ask the Lord about that one thing. And just write it down in your phone or a piece of paper or whatever. Um, And then we're going to pray together. Sound good? All right.
There's something special about admitting the dreams in your heart, sharing them, and having the courage to say, you know what, I'd actually like to do something with this. Or simply, I'm willing to. I'm willing to give this a shot. I've, I've been involved in a, a few groups where we shared our dreams and our hearts with each other. And very candidly, every time there was a significant release of what we would call grace or the power of God to step into those things. Um, where all, those dreams took skin and bones, became things, and sometimes quickly, sometimes over time. But every single time, it was a lot. It's something in partnership with God saying, I want to be who you created me to be. I want the courage to walk out what you have planned for me. And uh, I'm taking a step in that direction. Um, It's a, really, it's a lifestyle. It's a way to live. It's a way to embrace him and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pursue you. I'm going to pursue the things you've put in my heart with excellence. I will stumble. I will trip, but I will get up. I will try again. As a people, when someone stumbles around us, that's one of the silliest things in the world for someone to risk greatly and then to say something like, I knew they wouldn't make it. Or to say, oh, they should have just done something else. Why dream so big? Why try? When what we really could be saying is I'm so incredibly impressed with the courage you had to pursue your dream. That was a victory. Even if they don't get there, that courage in itself is a real victory. That pursuit was a real victory, and it should be honored and admired. And we should call it out in each other and honor that and admire that. And hopefully, in the coming weeks and months, we get to do that in each other. I believe that God is going to release grace today for these things that you guys have been writing down, considering in your mind, the things rolling around in your heart. He is going to release grace to those things. So it's not about perfection. It's not about a certain expression of that that you have in your mind. It's about taking a step in that direction and partnering with him. Because he will lay out the steps for you. And that journey is a journey of encounter with him. And it's a journey of encounter for the people around you who will watch the courage that you live with. Who will see the expression of him that comes out of you in that process. So if you are willing to say, yes, I will pursue this thing, or even if it's just, God, I'm willing to pull this thing out of my past that I let die and see what you will do with it, then I just want you to agree with this prayer. Okay, you can can say your own prayer, but we're going to pray together. And we're going to, (laughs) <laughs> this is not an if. He's going to meet you. Okay? He's going to meet you. All right. Let's close our eyes. God, thank you for meeting us in scary places. Thank you for the grace and the life that you have available for us, for the path that you have prepared, for the dreams that you have put in each of us. God, today we're saying yes to you. We're willing to pick what you have put in our hearts up. We're saying that we are willing to take a step towards the dreams that maybe we have been too scared to step into, things that seem too big to even walk towards. Now, we will be a courageous people, and we receive your grace and the empowerment of your spirit to walk into those things. You have gone before us. You are coming behind us. 
you will meet us in those places. God, I ask for dreams and visions to fall on each of us, to speak to us about the plans that you have, about the steps ahead, to encourage us. God, I thank you for the grace in each of us to lift each other up, to be people of honor who are trustworthy, to help each other step forward in our dreams, to encourage each other to be the braces that say, you have this, you can do this. God is meeting you in the deep places of your heart. God, from this day forward, would you bring us forward into the design that you had for each of us? Let us be a people who live courageously and authentically, who do not try to fit into lines and boxes and orders, who do not align ourselves with what has been or what we believe is expected of us. Now we throw off those bounds and those lies and those chains that would tell us we're supposed to be a certain way when you created us to be unique, to have a different spirit and a different expression within us. God, we take a hold of what you have for us, your destiny, the plans that you have for us. God, we receive that grace. And just take a minute, pray for the person on your right and left. Ask for it to fall on them. Pray whatever the Lord puts in your heart. But bless them. In the name of Jesus, I bless each of you to be a dreamer of God's dreams, to bring your unique expression of him to the world. May you be empowered. May you receive his understanding. May you receive wisdom from above. May he give you ideas and perspective you have never considered. May the thoughts of this world and the the wisdom of men fade to the background. May we see God in you like we have never seen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. For more messages and other resources, please subscribe to this podcast or go to our website at www.crosskingdom.org.